If you've always wanted to start learning watercolor, but you're not sure what kind of supplies you need to create stunning paintings like this or this, then make sure to stick around until the very end. In this video, we're going to talk about all the basic watercolor supplies you need as a beginner. And don't worry, hindi mo kailangan ng mamahaling supplies. We've worked with over 200 beginner watercolor artists and we've seen their progress skyrocket. Yung nag-start sila na simple elementary level pieces lang hanggang natuto na sila ng detailed florals, portraits, and landscape paintings. If finally, gusto mo na din matuto and gumaling sa watercolor, then we invite you to hop on a consultation call with us and see if you're a good fit for our online watercolor painting course. You'll be guided by our pro watercolor mentors, Sir Ian De Jesus and Sir John Lapore, of a combined experience of over 20 years. You're going to get personalized feedback and coaching alongside our community of supportive aspiring watercolor artists. Ready ka na ba? Click the link in the description to book a call today. We can't wait for you to join us! We've met aspiring watercolor artists na gustong gustong matuto ng watercolor painting but wala pa silang art supplies. When we ask them, Bakit hindi pa rin kayo nakakabili ng supplies and makapag-start na kaagad? You know what they say? Hindi daw nila alam which supplies to get. And sometimes, it feels overwhelming. What if I buy something and hindi pala tama or hindi good quality? Sayang lang yung pera. Of course, we understand the concern. So, let's break down your watercolor essentials. First and foremost, you need your own watercolor set. For a lot of beginners who only experience watercolor at school, ito yung pinaka-common image when you say watercolor set. Oh, medyo nostalgic ba? Let us know in the comments if naalala mo pa to. For an elementary school kid, okay na yung mga watercolors na to. But if you actually want to get better, then you'll want higher quality watercolors than this. There are three things you want to look out for when you're buying your watercolor set. Saturation, chalkiness, and light fastness. How vivid or muted do you want your watercolor set to be? Higher saturation means brighter, stronger colors, aka matingkad. Lower saturation means muted, grayer colors na parang kumukupas. But actually, that's just how the shade is. You might have a preference depending on your own art style. For example, yung pro watercolor mentor namin na si Sir John Lapore, he actually prefers slightly less saturated colors for his portrait paintings. Pag masyado daw matingkad, hindi na realistic tignan yung skin. After your paint dries, does it look like parang may nagmix ng white paint? And then when you touch it, it feels almost dusty. If naalala mo pa yung watercolor paintings mo using this yellow camel brand watercolor, then you might understand what I mean. Actually, yung dustiness and parang yung may white paint na halo, yun yung sign that your watercolors are chalky and hindi good quality. From what we've observed, medyo may chalkiness talaga pag cheaper end na student grade watercolor. We'd actually suggest going on the mid to higher range student grade watercolor sets para hindi chalky. We've compiled a watercolor review playlist for you from our pro watercolor mentor, Sir Ian De Jesus. He goes by the username RavenFox13 online and he already has a YouTube channel with a bunch of watercolor set reviews. We've picked out some of our favorite sets. You can click the link in the description to check it out. Your watercolors will fade over time. Some colors may even fade faster than others. This is usually because of natural light breaking down the paint over time. So guys, if my watercolor painting kayo, wag niyo display where it would be hit by direct sunlight. If you want to display and preserve it properly, you can spray it with a sealant and make sure that you frame it with UV protected glass. Also, if you want to do watercolor commissions in the future, we highly suggest you invest in pro grade watercolors. Yung student grade sets, hindi talaga ganun kaganda yung light fastness. Baka magulat na lang yung client mo na pumuputi na yung painting niya. You can easily find watercolor paint in two formats, pans or tubes. Yung pans matigas siya, so kailangan ng konting tubig to activate the paint. If you're a total beginner, then we highly recommend getting pans. They're mess-free and come in different colors. 
di mo kailangan mag-overthink about color varieties. We recommend two watercolors for people who have a bit more experience. They're thicker, wetter, and highly concentrated. If you want to use them straight from the tube, you'll need a palette muna para makapag-mix ng colors. Medyo kailangan din ng skill and color theory knowledge so you could actually know how to mix colors properly. And alam ko na some people try to get away with not even trying to learn about mixing at all. Feeling nila, basta you buy a watercolor set na may maraming colors, okay na. Let's get this straight. Hindi mo kailangan ng sobrang daming colors. Our watercolor students only work with 18 colors on average. And getting keri na. Kailangan medyo masipag ka lang talaga mag-aral ng color theory. If you had the choice between these two watercolors, A, 100 colors but subpar quality, or B, 18 colors but good quality, sabi ka na lang, masulit yung bayad mo. If you've done watercolor art projects for school, most likely, you only used bond paper or Oslo paper. Ilang beses ba nabutas yung papel mo, tas nang nag-dry, the paper looked all warped and crumpled. The thing is, hindi talaga pang watercolor yung mga papel na to. When you use the wrong kind of paper, hindi talaga ilalabas yung full potential of your watercolor set and painting skills. Remember this, you shouldn't use regular bond paper or even Oslo paper for watercolor. Mahirap din yung watercolor on canvases. Usually, pang acrylic or oil painting kasi yon. So, what do you actually use for watercolor? It's simple, you use watercolor paper. But how do you know if watercolor paper yung nabili mo? Usually, there's a label for watercolor. Sometimes, aquarelle yung nakasulat. It means watercolor in French. If hindi nakasulat yung watercolor or aquarelle on the paper, then medyo risky. Watercolor paper is usually thicker, stiffer, and mas obvious yung texture niya compared to, for example, copy paper. It uses gelatin to let water sit on top of the page. This is called sizing. It's what makes the paper more suitable for watery, loose paint mediums. One big thing you need to remember is that watercolor paper can expire. The sizing can go bad and masisira yung painting mo. If you have watercolor paper kept in storage for a while, baka nag-expire na yan. But how do you know for sure? Try to check these three things. Number one, do you notice streakiness across your entire painting? Hindi sa mga specific colors lang. Number two, does your paper seem more absorbent than normal? Or number three, does it seem like your watercolor is just not being absorbed into the paper at all? If you said yes to any of these, most likely expired na yung watercolor paper mo. Don't worry though, you don't have to throw the expired paper out. You can still use these watercolor papers for swatching or quick studies or kahit mga practice paintings. To keep your watercolor paper from expiring, just remember to practice consistently. Don't be afraid to use your paper as much as possible. Alam ko, we feel bad kasi baka masayang lang. But guys, binili natin yan para magpaint. Hindi para tignan-tignan lang. Pag hindi mo ginamit, mag-expire lang din naman. So at least, if you practice with it, you actually get to learn something new and maximize your art supplies. Watercolor paper comes in three different kinds. Cold press, hot press, and rough. Cold press is the most popular and commonly used kind. My wiggle room ka when it comes to controlling your paints and it doesn't take ages and ages to dry down. My conting texture but not enough to affect the overall look of your piece. It's perfect for beginners just experimenting and finding their preferred art style. On the opposite ends of the spectrum, we have hot press and rough. Hot press is a much smoother, shinier type of watercolor paper. It'll take longer for your paints to dry compared to using cold press. So, it gives you plenty of time to manipulate and adjust while it's wet. Just make sure that you're patient enough to wait for it to dry. Baka mag-layer na kayo na hindi pa pala absorb yung paint. Mas bagay din yung paper na to if you want to paint lots of small details. So, kitang kita talaga sila. As for rough watercolor paper, it's, well, rough. This is because paper fibers are standing up and open rather than bent and compact like the other two kinds. These open fibers let watercolor sink in and dry down fast. As in, parang the flash levels of fast. 
Maganda siya if you work in a lot of layers and mabilis ka with your paint. This might be a bit challenging for beginners, so we suggest you experiment with this kind of paper once you've already gained a bit of experience. When you're picking watercolor brushes as a beginner, medyo nakaka-overwhelm kasi ang daming shapes and ang daming sizes. When you see your favorite watercolor artist na may bago na namang ulit na brush, parang ikaw na tatempt din na bumilik. You don't need every kind of brush in existence. So, which ones do you actually need? Let's talk about that in a bit. First, let's understand yung parts ng brush. Your brush is divided into three main parts. Your hairy bristles at the tip, the metal ferrule that keeps the bristles in place, and yung handle na hinahawakan natin. Brush bristles are either synthetic or natural. Pag sinabi nating synthetic, it's made from man-made materials like nylon. Yung natural bristles naman, they're made from animal hair. They function pretty similarly but mas accessible and affordable yung synthetic. If you're a beginner, just go for the synthetic bristles. Marami namang good quality. And you're a little bit more animal friendly. You'll know if your brush is decent quality if the bristles stay intact and it can continue to keep its original shape. Have you ever used a brush na parang may mga loose strands? Like when you paint, parang may mga random bristle strands left on the paper. Or ilang beses mo palang nagamit na free na yung tip. Those are signs that it's time to replace your brushes. There are a lot of brush shapes out there, and again, you don't need all of them. Here are the most commonly used. Round brush, flat brush, and a filbert brush. A round brush has barrel-shaped bristles na may pointed tip sa dulo held together by a round ferrule. The round brush is very versatile. Pwede siyang gamitin to paint details kasi pointy yung tip. And then when you press down, you can also get thicker strokes. If you like painting portraits, then we recommend using a round brush. On the other hand, a flat brush has straight, square-shaped bristles with a flat ferrule. This is great for creating sharp edges and geometric shapes. If you like doing landscapes, then we recommend getting a flat brush. A filbert brush is like a combination of round and flat. Flat yung ferrule niya, but instead of straight bristles, it forms a soft, half-circle tip. Filbert brushes are normally used for floral work kasi madali yung petals and leaves. Very delicate yung application niya and pwedeng gamitin for blending colors. Ultimately, what brushes work best for you can really depend on your subjects and even your preferred art style. If you're a beginner still trying to explore, then yung tatlo muna, round, flat, and filbert. Or if on a budget talaga, then kahit yung round na lang muna. Once you figure out your own preferences, then you can start experimenting with more brushes. On top of your watercolor set, your papers, and brushes, you also need a few other supplies. Don't worry, yung iba, most likely, meron na kayo sa bahay. First, you need to have two water containers on hand. Doesn't matter if it's plastic or glass, basta makahold ng siya ng water. We suggest reusing old food containers and not actual dining cups or glasses. You use one container for cleaning your brushes in between colors, and then you use the other container for the water that you use to mix with your paint. Kailangan clean water yung imimix ninyo with your paint para hindi maging muddy yung painting ninyo. Try to keep these containers separated. You can even label them so you can keep the container with clean water clean. Next, kailangan pamunas ng brush. You can use a paper towel, rag, or spare piece of cloth. This is so you can wipe off any excess water from your brush or magpalit ng colors, and you can even lift any excess paint from your paper. With watercolor, you absolutely need tape. Before you paint, you tape the edges of your watercolor paper onto your desk. Better if ma flatten or ma stretch out yung watercolor paper mo so you can keep the paper from buckling and warping. Use masking tape or washi tape so it doesn't rip off your paper. You can also use tape to hide or mask off certain parts of your painting to keep them white. Kaya siya tinatawag masking tape, de ba? You're not required to be great at drawing to be great at painting. But having a sketched out plan can definitely help. You can use any pencil and eraser as long as light lang yung marks and hindi siya nagsasmudge under your painting. If you want to make sure you get quality watercolor supplies, feel free to shop online at Artillery Philippines. They have beginner-friendly watercolor sets, papers, and brushes. Visit their Shopee, Lazada, or TikTok stores today. We'll put the links in the description. If you want to take your art journey further and learn watercolor basics, learn how to paint stunning portraits and landscapes, then we invite you to join our online watercolor painting course. 
kahit no experience, okay lang. This is your chance to finally develop your artistic potential and find a creative outlet to de-stress and express your emotions. We'll teach you everything you need to know. You'll get personalized feedback from pro watercolor experts with decades of experience. Plus, you'll be with a supportive community of fellow aspiring artists who are in this journey with you. The link to sign up is in the description. In the meantime, you can learn more about the top three misconceptions that's holding you back from starting your watercolor journey.